Uh, I never, I never really know how to start these things, which is why I always try and start them the same. Uh, hi, how goes it? Gavin here, and I'm back playing, uh, playing some indie games, but doing something a little different uh, this time round. Uh, usually, I just play one of these, a good one that I found on, um, usually itch.io, sometimes Game Jolt, maybe sometimes even Steam. Um, this time, we're gonna be playing a few of them because I found a few good ones that uh, by chance are from the same uh, developers. And I've actually played a couple of these since I've been away. Uh, and I've been kind of waiting to show them off because they're really fun games, really cute. Some of them are actually really, uh, really cool and stylish. And they're games developed by some guys called Power Hoof, who the game may have just paused because I've just gone to the Itch.io page. Um, so, one second. Okay, cool. So uh, the the developer's called Powerhoof, uh, and I'll just read you a little a little uh, description from their page. It says we're a couple of guys from Melbourne who have been making games together for over a decade. Barney handling the art while Dave codes it up. We love making little free games, game jamming, and collaborating with friends. Often collectively calling ourselves the Sea Dads for a laugh. As well as that, we have two full titles, Crawl and Regular Human Basketball, that are currently keeping us able to do this full time, living the indie dream. So it's they seem like a like a fun group of guys. Well, at least a couple. Sometimes they they have more than a couple of developers, and they do have two um, paid games in development. I might give them a try sometime. Crawl actually looks pretty cool, but for now I'm just going to play a few of the free ones. Starting off with the Matra D. You press space to start. I've played this before. Really enjoyed it, which is why I wanted to uh, play it again. It seemed very strange so we're, we're a little short man at the minute and all you gotta do is get to the exit but before you do that you gotta help diners to their seats by picking them up and just taking them to dinner you are too, too kind. <laughs> all the voice acting in this god damn my ass i can never find a comfortable spot to record in so i probably won't play all these in one go um, oh no! Oh, that was uncouth, which is in my top ten favorite words. Um, I probably won't do all these in one go, but um, oh, that was close. There we go. And you got to take them to the right color seat, obviously. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I might space them out a bit just because uh, I've not got a very comfortable spot to record in at the minute. Still uh, experimenting with uh, where I'm going to be recording and stuff. I've explained the uh, echo multiple times, but again, sorry for that. Come on. I hate I hate stuff. Why are the spikes in this restaurant, man? It's not an enjoyable night out. Use arrow keys to extend. So you see our perfume bottle at the bottom there. It's got six little uh, six little uh, things. So we can go one, two, three, and you see, four, five, six. And that's the gimmick. You can uh, stretch and you can go oh, 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 and you get out of a, a level all French and shit. You can also duck. Oh, press Q R E to contract. Oh, there we go. So we'll pick him up. So Q contracts us that way. And I think it's a... Oh, God. There we go. Oh, no. We've got to pick him up. There we go. And then... <laughs> Come on, this is a great game, come on. Oh, and that's there we go. It's 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 unique. It's quick and it's really not Oh no. Lotion keeps your skin supple. Stretchy. Oh I know what we gotta do. Wait, we jump and we Yeah. <laughs> so good. And I've 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 not really seen anyone else play this, which is a shame. So you got you got to think with jumps now. It's see this is why I play indie games. I would I just my my throat might be a little hoarse today, and it's because I just finished Dark Souls two for the first time, and I finished it, and I was like I I literally said the words to myself. This is why I fucking play indie games. <laughs> Cause fuck me. And then we yeah, got to get to the uh, what I assume is a priest. Pick up. Oh no! I'm oh no! I'm afraid I'm stuck here. There we go. And what if he... No, he doesn't... That's a shame. That's a damn shame. Oh, no. I'm not very good at this. 
I'm the world's worst maitre d. There we go. I like uh, I like stretching as much as possible. I don't do as much moving around. But yeah, I played this in my spare time while I've been away. There we go. And like I say, I've not seen anyone play it. I probably won't complete the whole thing. I don't even know how many levels there are. You got to be quick on it sometimes. Get that lotion, and you can you can even give yourself a back crack like that. Oh man. Oh no. Uncouth. I never get to use the word uncouth in daily conversation. It tears me up inside. Oh my god. My little legs going. It's like a like a sausage dog. Look at that. Imagine you're walking down the street, you see someone coming out, you're like, good day. Tilt on the side, it looks like he's sort of hanging onto the wall there. It looks like a it looks like he's climbing uh, uh, one of those building climbers. He's climbing one of those building climbers. Can I zigzag? Yeah. Look at me. I'm a zigzaggy man. Right, I don't want to be a hero here. There we go. There was no one to sit, we just had to, um... Empty day at the restaurant, I guess. That was close. And <laughs> you go like that. Uh, so there's really... They, you know what, I kind of challenge myself sometimes when I play indie games, because as with Fruits of a Feather, there's really not a lot to talk about with some of them. But it's it's less about challenging yourself for commentary. A more of showing games off to people that deserve to be showed off, no matter how simplistic they are. I, I always do that. I always drop them. Oh no. How do I do this one? There we go. And that. There you go. And it's kind of weird. No, he's French. I don't know if I want to sit you. I don't know what kind of smells you're going to make in the restaurant. Man, these customers really love this place. Maybe they love the service. You're welcome. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm... Look, oh, yeah, the ultimate. Check this out. Get off my ear, please. So, unfortunately, I don't know how you're able to uh, drag. I gotta use my. Uh... How much can we stretch? Oh no. Oh no. I gotta... Yeah. There you go. Heavens to Betsy. I love how um, polite and re respectful this game is. But these guys... Um, sea Dads. I do like the name Sea Dads better than Power Hoof. Oh no. Uh, yeah, they... Uh, they don't have a... You, you suck, dude. There you go. They don't have a particular style in terms of game makers. A lot of these games do have this sort of... I don't want to say MS Paint, because it doesn't look like it's made in MS Paint, but it's sort of low-poly kind of look to it. And uh, But the amazing thing is that I have played some uh, sort of horror and dramatic games from them that have this kind of style. And uh, they're... Well, yeah, they're able to do that. They're able to use this style in a range of emotions, and I just think that's very res uh, respectable. No! I got. I want my lotion. I put it on my skin. That was a reference to um, Sands of the Lambs. I don't know why I made it in this uh, cute little game about delivering people to tables. I'm sure you can duck, too. Is there a button? Oh, there we go! How did I do that? C. And you can do that to get through or under tables. Oh no. Pointless spikes. What is this, Sweeney Todd's diner? Because <laughs> I'm trying to kill my customers, you understand. A lot of the games that they have are very narrative focused. I think this is the only one I've played of theirs that isn't. Um, and I'm not playing them all. You understand so that it's sort of if you like the look of what you see no you gotta you gotta get off here dude there you go and ducking helps you get those weird angle ones oh no you're stuck in the wall but uh, they're very good at coming up with I want to say kind of weird concepts for, I mean this is a weird concept for a game who thinks, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll combine fine dining uh, etiquette and um, 
Stretch Armstrong. Like, who, who comes up with that, you know? And a lot of games, a lot of the games are like that. Especially the paid ones. Um, Real Human Basketball, unless I'm mistaken, which is one of the paid ones they're working on. It's about, oh, I, I can do this. I just gotta un unfuck my spine. There we go. Um, it's about... What's it about? <laughs> I'm so half concentrating on trying to solve puzzles. Yeah. So yeah, if I go like this and I duck, and I can slide on the table, and then I can contract. Ain't this an image? <laughs> can I wrap myself around it? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, we'll get here. Oh no. That's the best I can do. That's ridiculous. Check that out. What kind of sight is this to behold? Okay, I'll leave you to your dinner, man. <laughs> and then we do it again? Yeah! I love just being on the ground and stretching. There you go. Oh, it's giving us the tutorial now. But you can, you can like, worm your way through like that. That brings me way too much enjoyment. It's so good. It's so good. Oh, Missy. We oui, oui. uh -huh. I'm, of course, British, and as a Britishman, the French are my mortal enemies. Just kidding. I actually like France. You are the Mage D. Oh, it's been confirmed. There's a bomb. Oh my god, it kills you instantly. It's the last thing you want when you're out on your anniversary dinner. I should have taken care of that. That was my responsibility. I've let the customer down and myself. Just kidding. I fucking hate customers. I work with them every day and it kills me inside. <laughs> Alright, slide along, man. Slide along. You know what? Half the time I, I start a sentence and I'm pretty sure I've forgotten whatever sentence I was saying. That's how these videos work. Welcome to the channel. And can I... Oh, no. I just, I just kind of want to... There you go. <laughs> I just want to do it in as less steps as possible. S excuse me, ladies. I didn't mean to interrupt your um, your Golden Guild meeting right here. I, I want that lotion, son. Miss. And th they're already seated. I didn't have to do a damn thing. Easy work, easy life. I forgot how to jump for a second. There we go. My TV just turned itself off. That's terrifying. Get that! Lotion, eh? Oh no! Oh! Impossible! Wait, get up, and then you... And then you... Oh, I know what I'll have to do. Or at least what I can do. There you go. Stretching makes everything easier. Not just sex. That was a shitty joke. And I apologize. What am I, six? I ain't even six foot, let alone fucking six in age. Let's, there we go. Oh, this is gonna be, oh my. Talk about compact. I can't even run my way out of here. Look, he's completely unfazed in terms of appearance. <laughs> his legs are just disjointed from the rest of the sprite. He's taking a nap on his kidney. Meanwhile, his legs are going ape shit. Let's contract. And I'm pretty sure we gotta do this. I like his hair, man. He's got good style. Ah, oh, that was brilliant. A 10 out of 10 execution. I'm definitely getting a tip. And then we... There you go. <laughs> oh no, I'm stuck in the wall. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is one of those, it's just too much fun. I highly recommend, like, getting it. And try and complete it. I'm sure that lots of new shit gets thrown in the later levels. I'm not finishing, mind. I'm still playing. I don't even know how long I've been playing. 15 minutes? Okay, I'll move on in a second. I probably talked for fucking 10 minutes at the beginning, as I'm prone to do. I don't know why I do that. I'm just a... Oh, no! Ah. Oh. My finger slipped, I wasn't concentrating. This one's giving me trouble, man. I might call this uh, the last level. <laughs> Let's get that lotion. Oh, 
I've perfectly slipped into those. I don't know why, uh, you know, if Houdini took up a job as a maitre d', he'd have no problem getting through. All right, we gotta, we gotta run, jump. Yeah, there we go. Perfect execution. Wait a minute. A lot of it's just about hooking yourself. Like a prostitute in the mirror. Commentary's hard sometimes, you know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, oh no, yeah, there we go. Perfect. And then I'm just not gonna fuck it up this time. That's bad, that's wrong. I'm, I'm... God damn it, shit lord. There we go. Wee! Oh! oh! I thought there were spikes underneath me for a second. Let's just go. Let's go. I get too excited to use a stretch sometimes. See here I can just, uh, I can duck myself down. Perfect. Why didn't I do that before? I'm not utilizing my superpower to its full advantage. Oh my god. I just noticed what this guy reminds me of is the, um, the tube flailing guys that try and sell you, uh, used cars. You know what I'm talking about. There we go. Perfect. Wait, where's her chair? I completely forgot. There it is. Okay, you you stay here, lady. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you that to that chair. You are too, too kind. Oh, thank you. Remember to tip your major D. <laughs> cool. Oh my God, look at all this lotion. <laughs> I'll do one more. Like I say, it's very addictive. Okay, you gotta stay here, actually. If I can put you down, sir. If if you could get off my head, sir, I can seat you. <laughs> Please. I beseech you, so I can seat you. Get, get. This is, oh my god. You gotta stay here, mate. Oh, look at this. That was um, quite a maneuver. See, that was crazy, dude. Feel like I'm playing um. Presentable Liberty, awesome shit. With the mini games. Okay, I got it. I got it. I hook back up here. Oh no, he's out of reach. Grab my arms. <laughs> Grab my arms. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> okay, one sec. Stay here, mate. Don't want you getting spiked. Don't want you getting spoked. There we go. Okay, now we can we can do this new. There you go. It's all in the technique. Thank you, thank you. Enjoy your dinner, fucker. Let's go get. Let's go. Let's go get the. Let's go get the lady. And we can get her dinner. Look how long he is. Look at that. Oh god. <laughs> it just goes straight through. <laughs> it made a farting noise when I got the lotion. And then, okay. Wow, okay. I, I don't know. Uh, something got into me then. I don't know. Maitre D fever. That won't work. I don't want to just jump blindly. Oh my god, that was close. Um... <laughs> Ooh, there we go. <laughs> I apologize. There we go. Oh no, I can't make it. No, I can't. <laughs> An upside down L is a, means winner. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit this guy and then call it. There we go. I, I'm not finishing the level. I just, uh, I, I, my man has kicked in and I had to see him. That was the maitre d. It's, it's, it's so simple and so fun and the joke never gets old because I've played this game like 30 times and I still find it funny um that was the <laughs> that was the maitre d definitely give it a try links to all the games I play will be in the description of this video and I'll also link their page so you can just go and play whichever ones you uh you fancy 
or checking out more of them anyway. But let's move on to the next Sea Dads game. Okay, this is our next game by the Sea Dads. And, uh, oh, there's some credits right down there anyway. This one's a lot more narrative focused. I've played it before. It's called Snowed In. Oh, my frame rate looks kind of janky there. Hopefully it comes out okay. Why does it say my uh, voice recording broke the levels? I apologize if I came in loudly. Uh, now, like I say, this one's got like um, narration to it. So um, I I've tried to orient the uh, the audio for the narration accordingly so you can hear the story as well. Uh, I'm sorry if, if, it's, if it's shitty, uh, but let's just get into it. This is a story about a young girl named Tabitha. We all have stories, don't we? But I'll wager none of your tales involve a mysterious cottage, a terrifying witch, or a foul-mouthed badger named Colin. I love the humour, it's so British, you know what I mean? I guess I, uh, oh, I click, don't I? There we go. One fine morning, Tabitha was on her way to the village when she encountered an altogether ugly and thoroughly terrifying witch. What a lovely looking young lady you are, said the witch. You'd look prettier still sitting atop my mantelpiece. And with that, there was a spectacular burst of magic that no amount of effects artistry could hope to capture within 72 hours. And Tabitha found herself inexplicably trapped inside the witch's magic snow globe which is totally something all witches have. What a frightful cow, thought Tabitha. I simply must get out of here. And there's the setup, it's as simple as that. Press H for hints, eh? Look around. So this game's really cool in that it all takes place inside of a snow globe. A very small snow globe, just with like, um, models. As you can see, our character is just like a, like a little statuette. What happens if we walk in here? Nothing. Tabitha rattled the doorknob. Wouldn't you know it, it's locked, moaned Tabitha, whose patience for exploration was nothing short of piss poor at the best of times. <laughs> the narrator reminds me, reminds me of Rick Mail, and that just, that counts for so much because... <laughs> the door remained locked. Cool, I love it. It's like Bastion, except not. Hit the snowman. So there's a... The door remained locked. Yeah, yeah, I get it. There's a bunch of apples. Tabitha greedily polished off the last morsel of apple. Yummy! I absolutely adore apples! Cooed Tabitha. What happens if we try and roll an apple into the fire? Nothing. It's a nice game where nothing gets burnt. So we've got this tree stump here. I think I remember what to do, because I was lost on this for quite a while, to be honest. <laughs> Not lost, you know what I mean. You can't really get lost in a in a snow globe. Let's let's snake it, snake it. Let's shake it about even more. Look at all these apples. And I'm just. Do I just eat them all? Surely not. There's too many. There's a whole bushel. Stop eating them, you fat bitch. What if I chase one? There we go. Eating apples behind bushes brings back high school memories. I didn't. I didn't drink or do drugs, so had to resort to apples. Here, yeah, kids, do you want to buy some fresh fruit? The door remained locked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The door remained locked. I'm trying to roll some apples at you. Open the door up. Remained locked. Got apples. Okay, I'm just gonna eat all these. What about that branch there? What if I just keep shaking? Look around, that was the hint. What if I jump around? Jump around. And now I just can't move without eating apples. I just don't know if there's a finite amount. I did play this game, but very long ago. And by very long, I mean less than a year. But I have a shitlord memory. Oh, you can't eat them if you're uh, if you got to chase after them. 
Hey, that cooked that, did it? God damn it. Come here, Apple. Eat it. Okay, I think there's an... <laughs> yeah, there's definitely an unlimited amount of apples. I can't eat all these, dude. Tabitha peered into the stump. It looks as if there's something inside, mused Tabitha. If only it wasn't pitch black in there. Of course, why... The loom of the stump remained impenetrable. The loom of the stump. I love that. Great writing. Hey, I'll tell you. The stump remained impenetrable. I know exactly what I gotta do. Look, this stick fell. I knew that stick was important. Tabitha picked up the branch. Stupid apples. And just like that, the branch was aflame. Let's have a look inside. Tabitha peered into the inky blackness of the stump, and by the flickering light of the torch, saw the unmistakable glint of metal in the shape of a key. Reaching in, she was startled by a sudden whirlwind of snarling fur and expletives. Oi, why don't you f*** <laughs> off and find your own shiny scraps? Barked Colin, who was, it turns out, an especially grumpy badger. What's mine is mine, and you can keep your filthy f***ing hands to yourself. And with that, Colin extended a middle claw on his tiny badger paw and fixed Tabitha with a penetrating gaze. What a wretched badger! exclaimed Tabitha. Call in the, uh, call in the sick. Fuck off, <laughs> hinted Colin. Oh, a fucking apple. I'll keep that for later. Call in the Colin. sailor over here. Yeah, I'll take another one. Yes. Another one. Fucking, fucking wildebeest, said Colin. Don't like badges. Not at the best of times. Take another one. Another one? I need to make room for all these fucking apples, said Colin. I'll toss this shiny piece of shit. Think my spine's about to snap. Oh, whinged Tabitha. How am I supposed to get that down? I, I literally just did it. I shook the uh, I shook the globe. How does Tabitha have this power to shake? Tabitha unlocked the door and stepped into the cottage. Perhaps here she would find her means of escape. Wow, we! This really is much comfier than my place. You've even got the same lisp as Rick Mail. All the apples I can eat, a luxurious country cottage, and my very own potty mouth badger. Bugger it, I'm staying right here. And with that, Tabitha sat her greedy little bottom in the comfiest chair she could find and ate apple after apple. Until she was content and fat, and then the witch ate her. The end. You know, oh, the game closes by itself when you finish it, and it just finishes on a fucking Michael Jackson thriller video montage memory. Homage, whatever. I couldn't find the right word. This is why my jokes fall flat. Uh, yeah, that was uh, snowed in. Um, and I guess having seen it, you've not really got a, a, a reason to play it yourself, but it's a good highlighter of sort of the 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 sense of humor that these guys go into when they make their games with the uh the, the passion they have my levels are all over the fucking place so i'm going to end this one and move on to the next video but i hope you certainly enjoyed snowed in i think it's my favorite of the sea dads games i've played i've played three we're going to play four today um so let's move on to the next one Okay, and uh, the next game we have here is called Peridium. Uh, clearly, obviously, again by Powerhoof. Uh, I have also played this game. This one's very different in mood to the ones we've been playing so far. This one, if I remember correctly, is quite a dramatic and heavy game. Uh, but again, incredibly stylish and well worth a play. It's a point-and-click item adventure, a very short one. Uh, if you know what you're doing, which I don't, because I can't remember how to p how to finish it off by heart. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start the game. Lauren first, though he didn't know it then. Didn't understand the dead look in her eyes, that unnatural, wooden, lurching motion as she moved about the lab. 
course, it was too late when I learned to read the signs. Most of the crew were in its power already, and I'd paid a terrible price for my blindness. Was I the last? I could hear their footsteps on the snow outside my cabin. Leaden steps, moving as one. Not safe here. I'll make for the lab. Ah, ah, ah. Pain, throbbing from the gaping hole in my stomach. That could have gone better. Dr. Turner, open up! My eyes, swimming. I almost black out again. Come on, Jim. There's nothing to worry about. Harris. Open this fucking door, James. Or whatever it is that's living in his body now. I clenched my teeth against another wave of agony. Keep it together. First things first. Gotta get this bleeding under control. Okay, there we go. That's the setup. If there's one thing I have to give credit to um, to these guys for, they're fantastic narrative writers. Like uh, even even with Snowed In, which was very simplistic, there was a a rusty screwdriver rattled around in the toolbox. Just the way everything's written is so um, fluent, and it pulls you in. Like they use words very appropriately. Let's check out these research papers. Collection of papers on the ancient fungi buried deep beneath the ice would have been the culmination of a decade of research. The better part of our lives together. I'd never finish now, but perhaps I can pass on the torch. So it, it feels like maybe um, this was a little bit inspired by the thing, as it's a similar setup. There's this virus that's taken over people and imitating their bodies, kind of thing, and this guy's like the last survivor of it. Nothing remarkable. So we can, we can the locker should have some useful supplies in it. Let's check out this locker. The door's stuck fast. Need something to lever it. Check out uh, all the cupboards. Found a small blowtorch. There we go. I think, yep, there's our inventory. It's Wayne's old blowtorch. And, uh, obviously, we've got a pretty gruesome sight on our left. So the style's quite um, Monkey Island. This is actually one of my favourite visual styles of games that you can make. It's this very clean looking, um, pixelated style. There's a game coming out at a point and click called Writer's Block, which is kind of similar to a, um, a an artist called, I believe, Gustav Vesner. I could be getting that wrong, but it, it's great work and it's great style. I love that kind of uh, look. There's nothing else useful. So there's just, nothing else useful. Yeah, that all counts as one cupboard. We've been shuffling around lab space. They're mostly empty at the moment. Locked. Best leave her. She's running fine. Oh, the furnace. Refrigerated cabinet holds some antibiotics at a safe temperature. We keep a small supply of morphine on the base too. Hence the lock. The thing had just kept coming. Finally went down after I emptied my last five rounds into it. But not before it had got me in the guts. Okay, Wilkins. What you got for me? Kneeling down over the body, I noticed the telltale, inhuman signs on his face. He was also wearing one of those armbands I'd noticed on the others. Oh god, the stench coming off him. Almost losing consciousness, again. But desperate, I persist. I find the key in his jeans pocket. This key must fit a lock around here somewhere. Hopefully it's uh, this cabinet. The lock clicks open. My eyes flit hungrily past morphine, antibiotics, bandages. Someone had been storing lab samples in here again. Strictly forbidden, but the lab fridge had been on the fritz for weeks. The sample caught my eye. 
Thin, scarlet membranes stretched over a pulsating, bulbous growth. Ah. I wave away the cloud of crimson spores, eyes, nostrils, throat burning. I cough, and the action triggers a dagger of pain from my wound. Still, I manage not to black out, and at least the cabinet's open. Morphine would only slow my mind, so clenching my teeth to suppress screams of agony, I injected some penicillin around the wound before bandaging it up. Refrigerated cabinet holds some antibiotics at a safe temperature. We keep a small supply of morphine on the base too, hence the lock. I'm done with it. Okay, we had a lot of ha lot happen there. Oh, still cl clenching his wound, I see. Yeah, I'm not talking as much in this one just because it's not that kind of game. Uh, I'm Looking not sure at about the radio. The my heart sinks. A stray bullet had smashed right through it. Shit. Radio's useless to me, broken, and I can't fix it with my bare hands. I do also apologize if there's a slight humming behind my voice, but the the music of the game should blank that out. I'm not sure where that's coming from. I just see it on my levels. I think it might be my laptop, which is not great. No time to mess with that. I know. It's showing results from my last batch of periodiolus. Hmm. High concentration of necrotrophic mysomacetus here. Pretty old, is eh? Can't reach. I shoved the barrel under the wire. There we go. I was trying to remember what to do from last time because I think this is where I got stuck. Can't reach. So get up on the barrel, you freaking idiot. There we go. Can't cut it with my bare hands. Okay. A uh, blowtorch? I have a gun. Don't want to waste fuel. They don't work together. Uh, so I love point and clicks that only use right and left button, and this one's doing it immaculately. It's doing everything correct. That's not going to help. Because if I have an item selected like this, I press right trigger to deselect it. This should how it always should be in terms of control if you're doing a simple one. It should be left click to use, right click to observe, uh, right click to uh, sorry, left click to select item, and use with something, left click to deselect, uh, right click to deselect item. Well, I got confused quite a few times here. <laughs> well, can't bear to go near the thing again. Seriously, still nothing for me. So if I remember correctly. Radio is useless. To um, there is a bit of pixel hunting involved in this. Oh, the toolbox. Oh, that's where I got the screwdriver. I don't need it again. These armbands. What are they? Do those things use it to identify those that have turned? Let's try and get this locker open if we can. That's the wrong item. Don't want to waste fuel. What do you mean you don't want to waste? Don't want to waste fuel. Don't want to waste. The door stuck far. Something to leave. Oh well, it's got to be. I leave her at the door with the screwdriver, but it's too small to be of any use. Huh? It's not going to work. The door stuck fast. The locker should have some useful supplies in it. So there's nothing else. I think I really need that uh, wire or something. Cupboard's no use to me now. Cabinet's no use to me. Oh, the screwdriver on the radio. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Despite the tremor in my fingers, I've managed to undo the screws. I love that moment in um, Point and Clicks where you're just like, oh, I, I get it now. Radio's useless to me. I'm trying to go inside it, dude. She's already opened up. Awful mess of melted wiring that needs replacing. I have my work cut out for me. Huh. Best leave her. She's running fine. Yes. She's already lit. So, research papers. This binder only contains a fraction of what Kathy and I had learned about the fossilized zygomycota. That it was still alive. That it emitted some sort of high-frequency sonar when propagating. That was only the start. 
God, I miss her. Heavy, dude. That won't work. No? Can't cut it with my... Some old wiring. Hey. Don't want to waste... If it ever takes me too long to solve a puzzle, I'll, uh, I'll skip, obviously. <laughs> Alright, I'll guns skip ahead. Empty. Oh, the gun's actually empty. Hmm. Can't cut it with my bare hands. Probably stored fuel at some point. Skin hung pathetic imitation of the men. Oh, Wilkins. Jane will be devastated. So I don't know why I'm skipping, uh, skipping stuff there. Don't want to waste fuel. So we've used the key. Haven't used one of these armbands. Oh, shelves. Found some mean looking wire cutters. Didn't, uh, didn't click that last time. <laughs> Completely missed it. There we go. Reaching up to cut the wire, I feel something <clears throat> brush against my mind. Vast and terrible. That mere fleeting whisper of contact. A freight train roaring through my consciousness. I was drowning. Found the music. From deep beneath my mind, I could feel that force animating my limbs like a monstrous puppeteer. Lungs burning, I struggled to the surface. Whoa. Okay. Oh, uh... That's wrong. God! Was that what the others had felt? I've got to get help. Damn. Now we got the wire. It's bloody from where it bit into my neck. He actually tried killing himself with it for some reason. I didn't know if it was a clue. Need to cut out this fused wiring first. Oh. Get this wire cutter. Snipping away the fused wiring, I have a vision collecting fusiform stem samples with my wife. Her laughter. Let's see. Should be working now. I grabbed the receiver. This is Dr. James Turner from station Theta 661. Do you copy? The welcome sound of a friendly voice comes through the static. Oh, thank God. I need evac ASAP. There's been... something horrible has happened. Yep. Tell the crew, do not land until they see... Repeat, do not land until they see Dr. Parker. Copy. Over and out. Thank God for that. Wavering on my feet, exhausted, I sink to the floor to wait. Sleep falls like a lead curtain. Unable to move here. I snap awake. Something very wrong. The cold. My mind. My body stiff and numb. The pain like hot lead being poured over my hands. My feet. My face. I struggle to move my limbs. Tearing myself away from the frozen floor. Flame from the blowtorch isn't lighting the fuel. I need some kindling. kindling. Not going near it again. Bandages? I'm done with it. The cold. Oh, this is timed. There's no can't do it. You mean they can't do don't it? Don't work together. That's not going to help. I leave her at the door with the screwed. Oh no. There's nothing else. Not going. Can't bear to go. I'll leave it alone. It's not important. Kindling. Oh, the research papers. Tearing up a decade of work. 
I throw it in. The page is lit. Ooh. Stand close until feeling returns to my face. Damn I lose some fingers, but I'm alive. For now. Is that the evac chopper? Can't bear to go. There's nothing. It's quiet out. Time to go. I'm turning the wheel when I hear shouts and bodies slam into the other side. I throw myself at the door, but too late. Their worm like arms twisting their way in. Oh god, don't know how long I can hold it. Oh shit. I stab at a flailing thing, but to no effect. Wait. I almost dropped the blowtorch trying to light it, but it flares to life and I hold it against the arm wielding that knife. I almost drop it again, as the smell of burning hair and pork crackling fills my nostrils. Screams from outside, and the knife clatters on the floor. I make a lunge for the knife. Wielding the cruel hunk of steel, I shut my eyes and start hacking. The muffled screams from behind the door, the sticky warmth splashing on my arms. Finally, I feel the door slam close behind my back. It had worn the same armband. They all did once they turned. No time to mess with that. Another one of those fucking armbands. Can't do it. Full box of cartridges inside. Cartridges for the pistol. It's loaded. And I'm ready as I'll ever be. Weapon shaking in my hand, I swung the heavy door open. He's coming out. Jim, put it down. Look, Ben's here. No. Dad, it's me. I'm coming in. No. Mum called before. She... I just got in. No, Ben. Get out of here. Run. Dad, put the gun down. They... they killed Kathy, Ben. Dad, it was an accident. They... they told me what... Look, it wasn't your fault. Dad, what are you doing? I... can't fight it... much longer. Dad, you need help. Please. Drop the gun, Jim. It's your son, for fuck's sake. Can't think. Are you one of them now, too? What? So you can kill his son or you can kill Hands yourself? Shaking. Every synapse in my infected mind urging me to pull the trigger. Oh, God. Please. And exhausted, I let it take me. And that was Peridium. I, uh, in case you didn't see, I did, I did choose to shoot myself there. Uh, there are multiple endings to this game. Um, I will say that I remember a spec the, the other ending. Um, and I kind of regret not going for it now. Uh, oh. Maybe not. Take him for processing. And then the game, as as the last one did, closes itself down. Uh, I will say the other ending changes the game drastically. Actually, you know what? I can speed run that. Let's do it. Let's let's get the other ending. Okay, guys, I've just got back to where I was. It only took me a few minutes, actually. When you know what you're doing and you don't listen to the um, to the dialogue, uh, 
as is the case with a lot of point and clicks. So I'm just about to load the gun back up and go through it's the um, through the interaction again to get the other ending. Let's do it. Weapon shaking in my hand, I swung the heavy door open. He's coming out, Jim. Put it down. Look, Ben's here. No. Dad, it's me. I'm coming in. No. Mum called before. She... I just got in. No, Ben. Get out of here. Run. Dad, put the gun down. They... They killed Kathy, Ben. Dad, it was an accident. They... They told me what... Look, it wasn't your fault. Dad, what are you doing? I... Can't fight it. Much longer. Dad, you need help. Please. Drop the gun, Jim. It's your son for fuck's sake. Can't think. Are you... One of them now, too? What? You know, I just thought there might be three endings, because what about if you do nothing? Hands shaking. Every synapse in my infected mind urging me to pull the trigger. But we came here to do something. Let's do it. We're going to shoot Ben. I gaze at my son. He'd lost so much already. Ben. Oh, God. Ben. But that wrongness is in his face. And... What's that band on your arm? What? It's nothing. What are you doing? Drop the gun. I can't let it have him too. Not our son. Man, it's a heavy decision. Yeah, um It just occurred to me then as I was as I was playing through that last cutscene again, there might be three, because obviously it gives you the option to make a choice there, but what happens if you don't make a choice? I think there's only two. I think I might have played it multiple times when I did play it. I think it just forces you to maybe shoot yourself, as we already did. But let's see what happens now. Hey crew, the new radiation monitor bands arrived this morning. Please see Jeff to get yours. We're required to wear them at all times. I know it's annoying, but health and safety and all that. Cheers, Samantha. So there you go. It's it's a. I think that's. That's the end there. Yeah, the game just closed, so uh, it's a very different ending, depending on the uh, on the choice you make. Because in the first choice, uh, it turns out you're right, and uh, you basically fall will to the 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 parasites who eventually take you away. You uh, you don't escape them, and you were you were right. And in the second one, it turns out that you were the uh, the one going crazy and everyone else was healthy. Um, and those bands were there to, to stop them contracting the uh, the insanity that took you. I, I see I see this kind of story done very often, but it's usually only either one way or the other. So a lot of games would do that there and, and it would either be you shot yourself and you sort of fail to them or you shoot the others and they were the monsters and you end up winning. This game's very interesting that it puts you into a no win scenario. Is that you get the there is no good ending, which is very strange for a multiple choice game. Because it's usually you get the ending of being the good person or the bad person. It's always supposed to be a sad story. And I think that is amazing because it prioritizes a a narrative goal they're going for rather than uh, gameplay mechanic. Uh, I love this game. I um, I'll try and put something up so you're not staring at blackness right now. By the way, I love the music's great in it. I don't know if it's uniquely composed. I think it said at the end there in the credits there is someone that did it. The art style is fantastic. The way it's written is kind of the same as Snowed In, in that the creators just have a really really good writing style, and 
I love the way the story unfolds. It's and I think I talked about this a bit. It's a very effective point and click in terms of control because it's simple, but it follows the format that simple controls should be following. I'm very stingy about that. Um, but that was Peridium, and those are the three games I've played before uh, by um, Power Hoof. But now we're going to play another game of those, and I believe it's along the same lines of Peridium as it's called Alluvium. So I'm just going to go and load that up. So as you can see, same visual style as Peridium. Uh, I don't know if it's the same kind of story. It feels, I, I'm just sort of getting the feeling from the music that it might be a little bit different. I don't know if they're making this a trilogy, but at the minute there is just these two games out. Um, I've tried to orient the um, audio accordingly for each game, so hopefully it's okay here. Let's get into it. Alluvium. Brand new experience. Brand new power hoof experience I've for me. I've had a knack for seeing what's coming. Same voice actor as James. Because of my line of work, inspecting a dam or a bridge, you're looking for signs of failure years in advance. The bridge we were headed to, remote part of West Papua, that could wait ten years for another experienced engineer. This looks beautiful. Really I beautiful. I don't foresee everything. Oh, it's like Nidhogg. <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> Thirsty. Ooh. So it's very simplistic in comparison to Pridium. And it's very different feeling, because this one actually has a feeling of colour and hope. Even though, again, they're using that same sort of MS Paint style that they had in Maitre D and Pridium. It's another point and click, yeah. Ooh, very smooth. It's burning well been sleeping on these fan-like leaves the past few weeks. I'll take it with me. Even the voice, because it's not giving you, obviously, this very uh, emotionally shaken style, the narration feels different, even though it's the same actor. So I, I'm, I'm straight away now giving props to the main actor, because he's capturing two different levels of emotion back to back in, in my experience with him. There's not much left of the engine, just one steel prop blade hanging on by a bolt. Oh, where have they? need appropriate tools to get it off. We're actually, like, stranded here. The trunk of the tree fern is wrapped in brown, hair-like fibers. I tear away a handful of the dry threads. And uh, it's the same inventory style. And it automatically selects my the item that I've just picked up, which is kind of annoying, so I'll just deselect it. A dam, eh? I gaze at the dam we built in the narrow gorge. It may be ugly, but we were proud of the work that went into it. That sense of accomplishment was well-earned, if short-lived. We? Oui. The water in the pool is brackish, undrinkable. I'd realized immediately that blocking the tidal flow upstream was our first priority. Without the dam to isolate the fresh water, we wouldn't have lasted two days. Maybe that would have been better. Brackish pool of fresh water? Without this outflow drain, the dam could never hold the massive pressure that would build above it. I ensured we built it strong, but rubble and recycled plane wreckage is no substitute for reinforced concrete. Plus, it makes a convenient drinking fountain. What is that dam made out of? Cheers. I think it's part of a wing. Oh, we did drink. Oh! A little ah, fishy. My pizza is here. So that's fresh water, is the green one. Not with my bare hands. Oh, my bare hands? Oh my god. I'm, I'm sorry, that's terrible. Racist. Racist in 2018. Not acceptable. <laughs> Australians aren't a race. I, I apologize. Oh, a spear. See, I just like instantly selected it. Let's catch a fish. I love the little animation on that fish. I spear the fish on my second attempt. I'm getting better at this. Still not first, though, is it? Let's just pull it back a bit. No, don't leave the fish. No time for that. You, you might need it. The fire went out. Oh, I'm wow. Leaving. I stare at the ship chugging slowly across the horizon. There's a lump in my throat, as for the first time in weeks, the hope of rescue is rekindled. But they won't see me. The fire. 
Oh god, the fire is out! I have to get it lit. They must see me. Am I on a time limit? I guess I... Unless the fibers in amongst the dying coals. Ew. I nest the fibers. I, I need this aircraft engine. Something tells me. No time for that. No, I, I was trying to... Rope. I checked the rope that binds some key support. It's secure. Short of being cut. I tear away a hat. I'd need appropriate tools to get it off. Oh no. Fuselage. I gaze at the wreck of the small plane. The pilot. Unconscious. The panic. Donnie grabbing the controls. Pulling the nose up at the last second. An eternity ago. Damn rope. Brackish pool. Fruit. The fruit tempts me. We tried them, of course. Grown drunk on them. They had that effect. Load inhibitions. Had us all giggling, dancing. But they did nothing to ease our hunger. Only made it worse. I blow on the embers. Willing the fibers to light, but my breath isn't steady enough to get more than a little smoke. It's bad, man. No. <laughs> just, just no. I nest the fibers. I fan the spark until it catches. Ah. And soon the fire is roaring. I thought I'd have to do that afterwards. I look up at the eerie harmonic howl. What the fuck? One of those strange wild dogs. My fish! Don't you dare! You're welcome to that fish, my friend. <laughs> as long as this boat sees my fire, I should be. The dog is on me in an instant. Oh. Rancid breath hot on my face as I struggle to keep its snapping teeth from my throat. It's burning well. I try to kick the dog off. It moves like a snake, all wire and muscle, and it's on me again in a second. With my free hand, I hold the branch into the fire until it catches. I drive the flaming brand into the beast's face. As it moves back with a snarl, I hear that terrible howling all around me. I swing the branch around wildly, kicking at the sand with my heels as I back away from the circling dogs. Oh! I swing up the tree as the first dog darts in, snapping at my ankles. Safe for a second, I remember the ship and look up. No, its course is unchanged. My fire now hidden to them by the rocks on the beach below. This is not good, man. With desperation, I thrust the burning branch into the leaves above me and they explode into flame. <sighs> With the Do it. of the dogs below me, and the furnace above already blistering the skin on my hands. I watch the ship sail slowly out of sight. Oh. Grip weakening. No way! I shut my eyes against the pain. Through my eyelids, the fire appears as an all-consuming wave of blood, washing it all away. Then I'm falling. Falling. I land hard. My eyes fly open at the sudden agony from my leg. And I look about me in wonder. The hammock I'd fallen from flaps against the bulkhead. My burned hand is bandaged, and my leg had evidently been set before I'd rebroken it just now. The pain has nothing to do with the tears that well in my eyes. Rescue. Gathering my will, I try to stand. Ah! The pain is too much. And I fall back, panting. Can't reach. They must have removed my shoe when setting my leg. I pick it up. I throw my useless shoe at the mop and succeed in knocking it over. Leaning over, I grab the mop. I snag the thin rope. No. I snap the mop handle over my good knee, then, biting one end of the rope against the pane, I bind the broken shaft to my leg. Crude splint complete, I carefully stand. That's pretty clever! 
Hey, we wolf down the food. Got rescued at Beetroot least. Soup, still warm, mackerel, and crusty bread. There's a bottle of what I take to be painkillers, though I can't read the label. I swallow two with water, no, vodka, from a tin cup, and pocket the rest. The pills leave me drowsy. I'll lie down and thank my rescuers later. I just want to say that sequence was a dot with the wild dogs was fucking fantastic. I haven't really had a chance to say yet. I can hear shouting. Like it got me good. Another language, Russian perhaps. Hello. Oh, don't don't speak in English to Russians, dude. Start World War Three. Oh shit, it's actually in Russian. Thank you. Thank you. The pizza, food belly. I can't believe you found me. I, I'd given up. That can evil. She isn't I good. Anger in his voice, blinking away my tears. I see their faces for the first time. Faces red with rage. <laughs> Do any of you speak English? My question cuts short as I'm shoved back onto my bad leg, makeshift splint shattering. <laughs> Please, I don't understand. <laughs> What the fuck? I stare at the gun shaking in the man's hand. I grab the broken shaft of wood. Don't think so. No. Nope. I swipe at the pistol, knocking it clear. Frozen for a moment, we all eye the gun. I dive for the gun, beating the crewman to it by a split second. I fire at the man. And he staggers back. And they swarm me. One grabs the gun, thumbs back the hammer. Then I shake my head to clear the vision. No, not trying that. Oh, no good. what do you mean, no good? No. I can't no. shoot myself. I see where the hammock detached from the interior bulkhead, dumping me on the floor. Must have been hastily tied. What? Food. Oh, the pipe! The pipe's hot, steaming slightly in the damp air. No. What do you mean, no? Fire at the pipe, it ruptures, spewing a jet of hot exhaust. Coughing, the crewmen jump backwards. I stand. Feeling the bones grinding. Oh, <laughs> no, I hate that. Dulled by the strong painkillers. Sealed. I shoot out the window and clear the remaining shards with the butt of the pistol. Then, head spinning from the cocktail of pills and carbon monoxide, I plunge into the water. I'm fucking Audi 5000, dude! Out of this fucking place. He screams in my head. The wet thud of blade biting into flesh. Ooh. The snapping of bone. I see the red wave again. Washing it all away. I open my eyes. Oh, come on. Not back here. My God. The passage is open. What's this? What? How am I walking right now? Oh, I'm very slow. Oh, I'm a wavy and shit. I never used the front of the engine. Gone through? What do you mean they? Is that why they attacked me? Oh God. Oh God. Oh, I can't believe it. They must have. They must have seen the old campsite. What were you Please. doing? No. I was free. This is leading to something dark, dude. The blood. The bodies. The madness I left behind there. I can't go back. I, I don't think you have a choice, my friend. But I must. The crew of that boat. I have to stop them. I crawl through the fuselage and out the severed tail of the aircraft. I think he ate his old crew. Those sounds I shut out. 
They echo in my skull again. Screaming, laughing, cutting. A man walks towards me. By his shirt, I see it's the ship's captain. Wait! Stop! No! You can't be here! You monster! You killed them! I can explain! The berries! They... Shut up! I should kill you now! No! I... Please what the go! Before it's too... The thing lands on him, knocking him into the muck. There's a sickening crunch as the rock in its hands comes down on his head. What the absolute fuck? She looks up, smiling. <laughs> Ian! You came back. Anna! Oh God! Anna, stop! No, 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 no! Can't let it rot like the rest! Come, have some! There's plenty. <laughs> I turn and vomit noisily, shutting my eyes against the sight. I should never have left them. When they'd started on the pilot. I mean, he was dead already. But still, I'd had to leave. I couldn't watch them as they... God, I should have done something. I don't think you could do. Oh, Ian, Ian. I always liked you, Ian. Could you come sit with me? This is... I have to end this. Somehow. Still got the gun, right? I take aim and pull the trigger. Nothing but a wet click. Oh, fuck in. no. <laughs> you want these? Pulling something from the jacket of the captain, she holds it up. Because I couldn't shoot myself, I could only shoot the bonfire there. Laughing, she tosses them behind her. Come and get them. <laughs> She returns her attention to the body, and I notice the watertight packet float down to the dam. No. Approaching, I gag on the oily smoke that bleeds out of the bonfire. I can eat the fruit. I notice the pilot's helmet wedged under the tail of our plane. I can eat the fruit. I try, but fail to free it with my bare hands. Searching desperately for something I can use, I lift aside a lifeless arm. To my dismay, it comes away from the body. Don't think so. No. A cleaver? I take what seems to be a fragment of propeller, sharpened into a cleaver. I try to lever out the helmet. It's slick with blood and gore. I need something better to get good leverage. Wrench. Prizing open cold fingers, I take the wrench. I try to lever out the helmet. It's slick with blood and gore. What the I need fuck? something better to get good leverage. Could be better. Don't know if I got a um I step towards her. Oh shit in hand. Oh. To my dismay, I hear her howl oh, shit. by two wild dogs. They run up to her, and she tosses them some strips of flesh. Here you go. <laughs> Aren't they wonderful? Oh. Those dogs will rip me apart before I get close. I notice the pilot's... I try. Come back. Ah. I unbolt the remaining prop. A long, flat bit of hollow steel. I wedge the propeller in under the helmet and push down hard, bending the prop badly in the process. The helmet comes free, and I'm greeted by the remains of the pilot's head, 
grinning up at me from inside. No. 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 There's not much meat on the thing. Oh, God. No good. Don't think so. No. No. No good. No. Hmm. Don't think so. Sorry, I'm being quiet. No. It's a very, uh... Admit... Ooh. Maybe. No. Nope. No. No. Evidently not. Let's head back. There's plenty for you. It's interesting that she won't seem to kill me. No good. There's not much meat on the thing. Campfire. Don't think so. No. No. Oh, the boat's still there. Well, that's the boat I escaped from, obviously. No. And I no. can't take any more palm tree leaves. I don't want to eat the fruit. I think that's just a bad shortcut option. I think if I put some time into this... Oh, the rope! Maybe the rope will do no. something. Oh, if I can... Not taking my chances with that feral thing. I doubt I could overpower them. I doubt I could. Don't think so. Now, the fact that it. There's not much. No good. Don't think so. Hmm. No. This is, uh. I won't go. Oh, I'm, I'm an idiot. I got I got an arm. A hunk of meat. Sorry. Come on. A lot of these games sometimes... Throw the horrid oh, meat shit. to the dog. It's n so, now... Not taking my... Excuse me? I, th I threw it food. Not ta I do have the painkillers. 20 minutes later. Paint... Oh! Dude. I crushed some there you go. <laughs> that took me a little longer than I'm happy to admit. I throw the horrid meat to come on. There you go. Against my better judgment, I sever the rope. The dam shifts slightly, and I hold my breath. It settles, and after a quick survey, I'm confident it'll hold. Providing there's no further stress. Do I, I want... So. I was going to say, do I want to stress the dam, though? I secure the rope to the helmet's chin strap. This could serve as a bucket if I... The rope wouldn't reach from here. If I could get onto... Hmm... The damn loom, I sense the huge weight behind. A dark mass pushing relentlessly at the wall. I don't fancy climbing it. Not barehanded. Three weeks later. Oh! Is it not a grapple hook? I fling the there we go. Up to the top of the wall. Won't catch. Need some, some sort, sort of, of hook. hook. Don't think so. Really? I tie on the bent propeller, there you go. making a serviceable grappling hook. Fucking MacGyver over here. Oh, we swapped it. The hook catches near the top of the dam. I struggle up, blood now soaking the bandage of my burnt hand. Well, last time we had a gun, it didn't work out so well, so, um... I don't know why this time I should. The rope to the helmet's chin strap. I don't know why we're throw the helmet going for this ammo. Pack it ...and start dragging it back towards me. I'm bringing the bucket up when I see Anna whirl around. Not good. I see what you're doing up there. <laughs> I like Anna's voice. She's very sinister. Backward in surprise. Her nails sink into my leg like talons. Come back here. Water, now red with the captain's blood, 
Pause from the head-sized out. I can just reach the outlet. I struggle against her claw-like grip. The dam shudders beneath us. No good. No. Oh. I jam the hideous object deep into the drain. Almost immediately, I sense the pressure building behind. Nice. A terrible, surging power pushing inexorably on the wall. She pulls me upward, and I feel her hands close about my throat. The wall falls silent for a moment. But... Then bursts. I was going to say, that better have worked, dude. A red wave. Washing it all away. My laptop's humming like a motherfucker, I apologise. Whoa, are you serious? Was that multiple choice? Because I got that ammo, didn't I? Made for Adventure Jam 2018. This was made for Jam, guys. By Power Hoof. So, yeah, very similar themes to um, Peridium. And I, I, you know what? I think I like this one a little more. There are some moments in here that are... This game did more in... Okay, I've been playing for half an hour, but I fucked around quite a bit, so let's call it like 20 minutes. This game did more in 20 minutes than a lot of AAA movies do. I'm not talking games here because I'm talking about storytelling. This does more than a lot of movies do. Um, Sally Beaumont, that was the voice of Anna. She did really, really well. She's even got a website. Um, thanks for playing, Kiss It. Press any key to quit. I wonder if that one's multiple choice. That felt very final. I think there's more we could have done there. Um, let me just go ahead and press S uh, any key to quit. Yeah, and it just closes by itself, as is the norm with Power Hoof games. That was that was great. Alluvium might have actually been my favorite game out of all four of those. Then maybe the Maitre D. Then Pridium. Then snowed in, although snowed in was very charming, and I loved the humor in it. And like I said, the guy who narrated it reminded me of Rick Mail. Uh, so that was some of the games by uh, Power Hoof, aka C Dads. I think they go by Power Hoof for the serious works, and C Dads when they're just making something for fun. Check these guys out; they've got so many more um, games. They've actually got quite a good repertoire on Itch.io, and I'll link their page. Obviously, they've got Shut Up and Slam Jam Karate Basketball, which looks pretty good. Murderside 2017. Sleepy Orphan Simulator, which I, I was considering also playing, and I might do a one-off video of it in the future, because it looks very interesting, but I didn't want to overload this video. I didn't know how long these games would be. It looks like it might be an hour long anyway. Uh, Morse Card Bum Bag Banking. <laughs> Which is the weirdest looking game I have ever seen. Riders of Race. So it's it's a huge um, assortment of genre. All done with a very similar style. That is just tweaked through talent of being able to portray. Use this style to portray drama or horror or comedy. Um and like I say, they've got uh, two full-length games out as well. They've got regular human basketball for $5, which I believe is multiplayer only, though I'm not sure. And Crawl, which is a dungeon crawler, which looks very good. And if I get the spare money, I might buy it and make a video for it, maybe a few videos for it. And I just wanted to make sort of a uh, showcase video for these guys because, A, I'm thinking of doing it more in the future with other developers who I find that I like multiple games from. And... Uh, B, I just think I think they deserve it. I think they deserve the exposure. Uh, I know this is a long one, obviously playing multiple games back to back. So if you've made it this far, thank you for sticking with me. If you've liked any of the games, please go support the developers. Uh, www.powerhoof.com or at Powerhoof on Twitter. Um, and maybe, you know, buy some of the games. They're obvi obviously talented. They're probably going to be very high quality games. And uh, I... Really wish them all the best and look forward to anything new they come out with. So that was a bunch of games by Powerhoof, aka C Dads. Uh, if you like this format, like I say, I'd love to do more developer showcases rather than just individual game showcases. Let me know, give me feedback in the comments if you did like the video and if you want to see more like this. Um, 
Until then, as always, I will see you guys in the next video.